Let's build a tetrahedral kite today. We're going to be using the instructions from NASA. So your materials are going to be 24 straws, eight inches or less, um, straight straws, not flexible ones. If you only can find flexible ones, you're gonna need to cut off the flexible portion. Um, some cotton string or yarn, you can break it up into a couple spools if you like. Otherwise, cut it while we go. Um, you need about 100 feet total. You need a scissors. Um, would recommend a hot glue gun and the glue sticks. A ruler or dowel rod for the kite bridle. Four tissues of tissue paper. Um, 24 by 18 or larger. And a glue stick. Okay, get all your stuff. All right, step one. With your string, you're going to cut a piece off that is approximately four feet long. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, four feet long string. And you're going to take six of your straws. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And you're going to be placing them on a flat surface. We're going to be working with three straws first. And we're going to join three straws into a triangle shape, okay? So this is where we're gonna start. So on the side where the two strings are extending from it, one end should be approximately 20 inches long and the other should be approximately four inches long. Let me show you. So thread it through. If you've got a nice, firm yarn or string, you won't need to use a needle guide or anything. If you have a really wobbly string, it could be a little tricky. So we're going to leave about 20 inches off on one side. It might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less. And we're going to do that with each one of these straws. So just like we have large, weird beads, we're going to put the yarn through the straws and string them together. Ba -ba -ba. Last one. Da -da -da. And there we go. I'm gonna pull these guys all together here. And I'm gonna make sure that we have a about four inches on one side. I'm not gonna be super exact, but I know that this part of my thumb is about one inch. So one, two, three, and four. Perfect. And when we tie this together to be in a triangle, we want to make sure that it is tight enough that our shape does not wiggle. So we're going to pull it taut, tight, taut. And we're going to make a little knot. Okay, make sure that there's no wiggling, no wiggling. And tight. Okay. Nice and taut. We have our extra string hanging off and our long end on this piece. Okay. Next, we're going to cut another four inch piece of string. We're gonna take that four inch piece of string and tie it to the end of the corner. Sorry, the end, yeah, tie that end to the corner of the triangle that doesn't have any string extending from it like this. So we've got our little piece of string and this point has the double pieces hanging from here. So this one is going to go over at this corner right here. And we'll tie it on nice and tight. Tie it on nice and tight, tight, tight. There we go. There. So it will have one little piece and a little baby tail. I'm going to tuck that little baby tail into the straw just to be nice and neat. Not necessary, but I kind of like the way it looks. That's why we have 
our little four inch tail on this side, our little just over four inch tail on this side, and our long piece. Next up, we're going to add two more straws to our long piece of string. Okay, and then we're going to tie that to the end of one of the four inch strings to make another triangle. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to thread it on just like we did before. Thread, 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 thread. Thread, 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 thread. Perfect. There's one. And then here is number two. Thread, thread, thread. Thread, thread, thread. Thread, thread, thread. There we go. Pull them down. We can tie it right onto here. Okay. So we're going to pull it taut. So our long end, pull it taut so there's no wiggle wiggle. And hold that in space. And have our little string and we're going to tie it right on. Tie it right on. gonna make a little bit of a bend. It can still lay flat if we want it to. We're gonna keep it nice and tight. And give her a double knot so it stays secure. So we've made our rhombus. We've got a nice diamond shape. We have a long end and we've got two short ends all connected. Okay. Now we are going to take a piece of string that's double the length of one straw, okay, which is one side of our pyramid, and we're going to tie one end of that double length string to the remaining empty corner. Okay, so grab your string and we're going to go double the length. Once and twice. Okay, again, you take the edge, line it up, go once, pinch, twice. Okay, we're going to cut that and we're going to tie it to our empty corner. I'm going to give it a little bit of a wiggle. Tight, 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 tight. And then double knot it so it stays nice and secure. Tight, 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 tight. Now we have a long piece, short piece, short piece, long piece. We're going to take the last straw from our initial six. And we are going to thread it onto the double length string. Okay, so take your double length string and add a straw. Tie, 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 tie. Da, 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 da. Now we lost a little bit of length while we tied it on, but it shouldn't be too much. I always add a about half a finger's length while I'm measuring, which is about half an inch. Okay, so now we have our rhombus with a straw attached. And we're going to tie together the two opposite ends, which is the end of the four inch string and the end of the double length string closest to the straw to form a tight 3D pyramid. So to do that, we're going to make our four, another four inch piece of string. We're going to tie it to this opposite corner or be the last one that we have open. You could also do this at the step before. I think on the NASA instructions, it has you tie it onto the step before, but honestly, I always get confused. 
if I am trying to follow it and then I just leave it. So I'm going to tie it on here, onto the corner, tie it nice and tight, tight, tight. Because then we have our long string, our short string, our double string ties right to it. And you see that? It's going to make a 3D pyramid. So we're just going to tie all of these together right now. Tie these together. Do, 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 do. Tight, 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 tight. And tight, 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 tight. There we go. You made a pyramid. So it's a really neat equilateral pyramid. All the different sides are the same length. You'll have some extra little yarn tails hanging off. And that's good. Okay. We'll set that aside and you're going to do that three more times. You need a total of four. All right. So go ahead and make those ones again. If you need to go back and watch those instructions as we go through. Okay. Then when you have a total of four pyramids like these, we'll start the next set of instructions.
all done? Do you have four? All right. Next, we're going to take just two of these pyramids and we're going to place them side by side, side by side on our tissue paper. All right. So lay your tissue paper down flat on your table. Okay. Make sure it's a big enough piece. And you're going to put your, your shapes, your pyramids, your two pyramids next to each other onto the tissue paper. So I will show you like this. I don't have a top down camera. Okay. It's going to go just like this. And at the corner of each one of these joined shapes, doo -doo -doo, you are going to mark one inch beyond it. Okay. So if it helps to temporarily tape these down, maybe with painter's tape, try that, but see where it's going to be flat on that side. It's going to be that diamond shape. Go one inch beyond one inch beyond one inch beyond one inch beyond onto your paper. Okay. So shape down, shape, down <laughs> and then put a dot on your paper one inch beyond each one of these pieces one inch beyond it might help like I said to tape it down so they're not sliding off out then you're going to remove your triangles pyramids and you're going to connect those dots to make that diamond shape, right? You're going to create that rhombus. Remember when we had first started and we made a rhombus just of sticks? That's the size and shape that it's going to be, but one inch larger on each side. Okay. Okay. Do that now. All right. Now this part is going to sound a little tricky, but I think you've got this. You take any corner of your triangle because they're equidistant and you're going to go two inches in from that corner of your rhombus. Okay. So we have the dot the edge that made our rhombus. We're going to go one more inch in for a total of two inches. And we're going to set down your pyramid right there and give that a trace. Okay. Trace inside that. It's going to make a little V notch in the side of your rhombus. Okay that now. All right. Then you're going to go to the other obtuse or wide open, bigger than 90 degree angle. And you're going to do the same thing down here. So you have your point going to go in one, two inches, lay it down. And then I'll show you how much you need to take out. Okay. Take out that chunk. Okay. This is so much easier when it's laying down on your table. Okay. So do that now. Next, you're going to go to the acute angle. The acute are the little ones on the ends that we didn't mark yet. It means that they're smaller than 90 degrees. And we're going to go directly from that vertex, that line that we just drew where it comes to that point. And we're going to put a dot one, and a half inches in, we're going to put our triangle <laughs> right on that line. Ah, almost. <laughs> you can also do this with a ruler, but if you don't want to grab another tool, you can just use the straight edge of your triangle. Okay. And that is going to cut off the tip straight across it. Okay. Now you're going to repeat that on the other acute angle. So your obtuse angles, you're cutting in, your acute angles, you're chopping off. And it'll look like this. Okay. So obtuse, we're cut in. Acute, we're cut off. Make sure that your shape looks like this. Go ahead and pause if you need to. Then cut out your new template. Okay. Ready? 
Now, I know it can be a lot of paper to manage all at once, but take your time and do it really carefully. You can always trim up, you know, get those small details in by like cutting out your initial rhombus shape. But we want to be as neat and careful as possible. Now you have a template and you're going to cut this shape out of your other sheets of tissue paper three more times so that we have enough for all four. Ready? Go ahead and cut that out now. Trace it onto your paper. Cut it out carefully. If it makes it easier for you to cut across and do big cuts, go ahead and do that. But just take your time. I was just thinking this reminds me of this one time I was cutting out a whole stack of things all at once. I cut right through my skirts. I was rushing and not paying attention. I was thinking how pretty would these look in wrapping paper, especially if you had like the metallic or the glittery wrapping paper. But I love these colors together. So I'm doing greens and blues. You can do any colors you like. Now, you're going to take one cut template piece and put it down on your table. And you're going to take one of your pyramids and you're going to lie it down like this. See how you place one side of the pyramid in the very middle of the template so that there's enough tissue on each side to fold over, wrap around the edges of the other two sides. Notice that you'll have a point and a point and a point poking out outside of your paper. With your glue stick, you're going to put glue on these flaps and then wrap them around, making sure that they are nice and tight over the edge. Okay, And then when that's done, you're going to flip, see that, that's all, flip like turning a page, the triangle and do these flaps. So it'll be flat, wrapped, and glue. I find that helps to kind of push my shape a little bit before I glue it down. Ta-da! You'll have a nice open side, you'll have a fully covered side. So these ones will all be fully covered, these ones are all fully colored. See how it goes back to making? that rhombus shape if it was unfolded. Now, repeat that process on your other three pyramids. So they're covered like this. This one got away from me a little bit. I stacked my last two and cut them together and the paper shifted. So it's best not to skip corners, but there is some wiggle room if you decide to anyway. Once you get into the groove, you can probably do all of your, like add glue to all of the edges at once. But just remember that you don't have to. There really is no rush. And with the different glue sticks drying at different speeds, it might just not work for your glue or your paper, you know? So, the particular glue sticks that I use, they don't dry quite as fast as some of like the regular white ones or the purple ones do. These ones tend to stay a little bit stickier for longer, which means that I can apply the glue to all the edges that are going to need to be glued and it makes it super duper fast. It might also help that I've been making a couple of these the last couple of days. It doesn't mean that I do it perfectly, but I'm starting to get comfortable with the process. I think that's true with just about anything we make. So I'm on my last one. If you need some more time, go ahead and pause. Take your time and go slow. I actually ripped this one, one the teeniest, tiniest bit. I don't think enough that you can tell. But tissue paper is pretty fragile and adding glue to it, especially clear glue like gel glues or liquid glues, can be really tricky to work with. Okay. 
that's not going to make mistakes. Once you have all your pieces created, you're going to set them down like a so, and you're going to put them next to each other to make a pyramid shape. It's a little hard to show kind of holding up, but let me start something else. So we're going to put them together like that. Okay. Flat in front of you. All the tissue paper sides will be facing away from you. Now, each of those pyramids are going to have strings that are free. Okay. So you're going to take those strings and tie one pyramid to another. That will tie all of the adjacent base vertices together. Okay. So we're going to be forming a new triangle on the middle. Okay. Okay. Take your time making sure that you get these the way that they need to be. So tissue paper side facing away from me, vertices tied together. Each one of these vertices is going to be tied to the blank, the open side of this one. Okay. So it'll be tied like this. Okay. Twinkles. There we go. And the single, and the single, and the single. Okay. See how it makes a new triangle in the middle? Now, it's going to be doubly tricky to tell. Show you here. We're going to take this one, we're going to tie it to the points that are on the top. So, where we have our triangle, this guy is going to go right on top. Okay? So, it's going to touch the top of each one of these pyramids. We're going to tie it onto there. Okay? Now, if you have made a measuring mistake or you're having a hard time in general tying the string, that's okay. Okay. There's no rule that says you cannot grab another piece of string and tie it onto the vertices and redo that. Okay. Some of these corners might have way more string than we had planned. Some may not have enough. Okay. So if your piece of string is just a little bit too short after all that tying, go ahead and grab another piece, tie it onto the vertices and try again. Okay. All the corners are left open. You should be able to reach into it pretty well. All of us have a different ability for tying and handling really tiny things. And sometimes we make mistakes. That's not a big deal. That is one of the cool parts about science and learning and being a human. Da, 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 da. Now we have a really cool giant pyramid. That's a key job. Oh, I like it. We have a lot of strings hanging down. But if you want to be able to use this as a kite, you'll need to create and attach a bridle to fly it. Personally, I don't know about flying it, but you can take a long string, like 15 feet or so, tie it to a ruler or a dowel, roll it up, and hot glue your string onto there. Okay? And then attach wherever you want it to. So where your base is touching the table, um, you'll attach it there. So there's more instructions about that in there. Personally, I am not going to fly it as a kite. I am going to find the perfect angle to hang it from my ceiling. Because I think it's beautiful. There's a lot of beauty in learning, a lot of beauty in math. So, it's finished. It's ready to fly if you want to fly it. You have to be careful with it. It's going to be fragile. And if you want, you can always build more of them and join them together into even bigger pyramid shapes. Remember, we started with just one pyramid. Now we've made a bigger pyramid. If we did this all over again, we could keep it growing. I don't know where you'd store that, but 
could be fun. Bye, everyone. <laughs>